there's a lot you can do in this town You set it up and turn it around We might have come from somewhere else But this is where we found ourselves Welcome to the local show People you work with, people you know Welcome to another edition of The Local Show here on Grassroots Community Network. Thanks for joining us, guys. I'm Eric Scarvin, your host. So excited to welcome back my neighbor. He's been on the show a few times. And it is local singer, songwriter, legend of Aspen extraordinaire, Dan Sheridan. Welcome back to the show, buddy. Thanks for having me. It's nice to be able to shake hands again, right? Isn't it? <laughs> Even yeah. hugging. Like I was hugging I the know, other night at Sue Casa. It was like, this is great. And by the way, they're down to like, Less than three weeks to go, Aww. and that whole complex is going to close. Our last night's April sixteenth. Okay. So make sure to hit Sukasa, Eric's, Aspen Billiards, and Cigar Bar. Right. I'll probably, I'll probably skip the Cigar Bar. Right. But April sixteenth will be their okay. last day in over well over thirty five years. Let's go together. So I would love to go. Yeah, we'll hang out and get to hang out with a whole bunch of friends that we normally don't see. Exactly, and two chicken enchiladas for $20, man. <laughs> there you go. So a uh, really good vibe. Well, the and question really... is, what's happening to it? Is the building going to go away, or are they going to... I, no I know knows. the rent's going up, so you okay. kind of do the math on that. Who okay. can afford right. whatever it's going to be? And okay. you know, we featured Sky Wineglass last week on the right. show. She's losing her Sky Gallery space. Right. So we're seeing this kind of... Um, you know, exodus yeah. uh, to a great degree of local businesses downtown, whether it's retail, restaurants. Obviously, we still have some. Right. But I think that show last week was an effort right. to raise awareness, maybe create some solutions like we're going to talk about today. Sure. Of recognizing challenges, uh, maybe accelerating change the last two years during COVID. Right. As we've seen our demographic change over. Mm -hmm. And... But I wanted to kind of talk about starting with like some fun things from this winter because now sure. we're kind of into spring break, right. which is a celebratory, you know, celebration time of right. the season. I think we have a lot to be grateful for ah. for this winter. And what are a couple of things that you're really kind of grateful for from this oh, last winter? Many things. Actually, I'm going to backtrack a little bit when you're talking about the businesses and the turnover. Yeah. I think it'd be really fun to have like a board game where you have to you know, guess what used to be in those places. And, you know, <laughs> I know like four businesses that were in like each location. That anyway. would be, well, there is Aspen Monopoly. Oh, there is. Or Aspenopoly. Okay. I, I think it's just Aspen Monopoly. Okay. Well, you can someone... find that at certain retail okay. stores around town. But I don't think it goes that deep, okay. but that would be a fun right. kind of next level. Kind of like, oh, that used to be, yeah. That, and then it was Ozzie's that before that. And, and, yeah. Anyway, what am I grateful for? Um, Most grateful for this past winter, 21, 22? Okay. Well, you know what I did? I've been playing guitar since I was a kid, and I made a commitment to, like, learn how to play that thing. No lie. I took, like, a lesson every day, and I'd get up and practice, and it was so fun because there's just so much to learn. And I, I just sort of taught myself when I was a kid, and I barely knew the names of the chords or anything. i just make stuff up. Okay. But it's been a blast. And I also taught myself how to play bass guitar, Nice. So if any bands out there need a bass player. Did you start with Smoke on the Water like we did? Like we rented a bass in high school. Me and my buddies were playing Smoke on the Water. And I think that's as far as we got. But yeah. it was super awesome. Well, you got bum, 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 most bum, of the way there. Bum, bum, bum. We yeah. all did that one. Yeah. Got to do that. Deep Purple, right? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. But that's kind of amazing. You, you never really no, had never formal really guitar no, training. Not much. So what can you, how can you progress? Well, I'm um, like, from I where never, you've already been, you know, I mean, well, for you folks at home playing so guitar, I, I played from here to here. Okay. <laughs> but now I can play from here to here. So, oh, yeah. So extending. I extended it. A yeah. More full and range. I just like to be able to be a decent lead guitar player, which I've never did, you know. If I, I do a lot of solo gigs, and uh, you don't really play leads when you're playing solo. The music will just stop. So. And then what about the gigs? You played quite a few live. Oh, I played a lot you know, of gigs. Now that we're back, kind Thank of in live God. music. And yeah, last week so I awesome. played um, six gigs in seven nights. Wow. And they were all different, which was really fun. I played at, uh, I'll be brief, I played at the Senior Center for St. Patrick's Day. Nice. I love the Senior Center. And then I was asked to play at the Aspen Chapel Sunday morning. And then I played at the Hotel Jerome and at the St. Regis, and it's all different. And it's after all these years, I still really enjoy what I do. And some of these songs I've played hundreds of times, 
But every time I step into the song, it brings me back to that sort of that emotional place that it was. And it even relates to like a geographic place where I heard the song or the feelings okay. that it generates. So, And do you, do you find yourself like tweaking the song still or do you play them? You know, how does that work in terms of the evolution of playing these songs hundreds of times? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, you know, a lot of it is the location you're playing at, you know. Yeah. If you're in a bar... You just want everything to be in your face and kind of ripping, you know. But right. if you're at the Aspen Chapel, you might want to finger pick it and, you know, be more peaceful and contemplative. Right. <laughs> Peace be with you, my friend. Peace be with you. <laughs> and also with you. There you go. There you go. I'm so grateful for being back to work, you know, on a full schedule. You know, for me, it's like you sharing what you love is the best part. Yeah. As corny as it sounds. Yeah. But to be out, you know, guiding, snowshoeing and right. fat biking. And right. I've got a couple of great instructors that do the cross country skiing programs for Sundog Athletics. And nice. we're coming up on 26 years I can't believe that. in May, which is so crazy. But just, you know, more of that, you know, more of the sharing. And right. I'm so grateful, especially with the denial kind of during COVID right. of being able to operate at all during right. certain periods yeah. and then being really reduced. So this winter was kind of like the door swung open and you were out there running around on our snowshoes yeah. and oh, uh, we're on this fun. new uh, EVA foam technology. So the entire deck of the snowshoe is EVA foam, okay. kind of like the bottom of your running shoe, that right. thick, rigid foam. Really? So it's really fun also and to turn people on to the new grippy technology. And gentle oh. on the feet and knees. It's, it's, it's modeled after the Hoka running shoe. Right. So it's got rocker or okay. curvature. Nice. So when you step on them, it's like a lively, springy right. snowshoe. Shaped, shaped snowshoes. So, sh so sharing that with you know guests from around the country, mm -hmm. we're also in an exciting development of the full line of what's called Eva from okay. Crescent Moon, uh, which is the only Colorado-based company, Crescent Moon Snowshoes. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've been having some conference calls the last couple nice. of weeks developing out that line, which could frankly be my ticket to what's next. Wow. Uh, so what's anyway, next? that's a whole other conversation. Yeah. But I want to take a quick break because there's so many things we need okay. to get to, including some live music. That would be great. Yeah. So, so excited to have Dan Sheridan here. And I want to thank our underwriters to make... Uh, for helping make shows like this happen all winter long from Thanksgiving to Easter. We've got Gonzo Nation, Haiti Children, Klug Properties, Highlands Ale House, Obermeyer, Pickin County Landfill, and last but not least, Sundog Athletics. Guys, don't go away. We're just going to go to a two-minute break. It's our only break of the show. We'll be right back with live music with Dan Sheridan and so much more, so don't go away. The Gonzo Foundation is a nonprofit organization created to promote literature, journalism, and political activism through the legacy of Hunter S. Thompson and is a proud supporter of the local show and grassroots TV. For more information, visit thegonzofoundation.org. I'm so passionate about this community. I absolutely love living here and raising my family here. It gives me a lot of pride to share this with my friends and my clients and help them achieve their, their dreams of owning an Aspen Snowmass and enjoying this incredible lifestyle. I'm Klaus Obermeier, and I wish you a terrific winter on the Aspen Mountains. <laughs> Locally owned and located at the base of Aspen Highlands, Highlands Ale House features delicious scratch-made comfort food, cocktails, beer, and more. Their sunny outdoor deck is ski in, ski out. Two miles from Aspen, they're open daily, winter and summer.
Sundog Athletics Aspen's Adventure Sports School is your opportunity to experience private, all-inclusive snowshoeing, cross-country skiing, and fat biking instructional adventures that will improve your safety, performance, and enjoyment. Welcome to the local show. People you work with, people you know. Thanks for sticking with us, guys. We are celebrating spring break and live music with Dan Sheridan. And Dan, we're going to go to a song here, one of your more noteworthy songs. <laughs> uh, but we saw some pretty craziness uh, in terms of the high-level real estate yeah. going on, in particular this turnover of the Gorsuch House, which I'm now calling the Rusky Ski Lodge. <laughs> and then some uh, a lot of high-level you know, activity, especially in the real estate world. And right. this big money has really rolled in. Right with all its kind of force and influence and right. sometimes attitude and entitlement and things like that. And I guess, you know, let's talk about the origin of the song Big Money, because it's been around for more yeah, than a has. few years. It's funny, yeah. It kind of has a resurgence going on lately. <laughs> it's cycling back to COVID be very relevant. It, yeah, brought it to the... But in the same sense, it's been around for us. It has. has been it has. had Big Money for a long, long Definitely. time now. Well, this song is... Um, the big money thing, yeah, that's happening. But what what I really meant about it was uh, the word exclusive and uh, elite and those kind of things, which are you know, kind of exclusionary. Yeah, you know who they're excluding? Yeah. You, yeah, yeah, and me. So yeah, that's that's kind of what it's about. Um, but yeah, and the changes yeah. that you know have happened to Aspen and like all my friends that have moved along. You know? Yeah. So yeah, it's a very. Uh, current topic isn't it it's very relevant and it can do a lot of good things too absolutely Let's, you know i don't want to be too one-sided about it i do appreciate oh, yeah. say my clientele some of oh, your yeah, clientele absolutely. the people i work with are the kindest people in the world they really are and they're my friends yeah. and they laugh at this as much as i do yeah, but the key is how they treat you, oh, right? Great when people. they treat us with respect oh, awesome. and even uh, you know and an appreciation. Yeah. And generosity. That's right. all the beautiful side. Exactly. It's really it's not the money itself. That's a wonderful thing. If people right. have been successful, you now some people may have made it say the Russian oligarchs maybe not in the most <laughs> reputable or you know with integrity and honesty. You mean weapons sales and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, you know, you know, dirty oil deals and <laughs> stuff like that. But I, I think know. that it cuts both ways and it's right. really how people act with the money. Mm -hmm. Is it respectful? Is it appreciative? Or does it want to kind of roll over right. everything like a steamroller? Right. But your song really goes into some great well, thank you know you. the lyrics. I'll uh, play it. I'll play it. I um, this happened, actually, I was out running somewhere, which I like to do, and uh, this place that used to be like open space turned into someone's private space, and they hired a security guard, <laughs> and a security <laughs> guard like tracked me down. He's like, hold on, runner. You're on private property. Oh, jeez. And I thought, well, that's the beginning of my song right there. There you go. Well, I was walking my dog down the old walking trail when I ran into a posted sign pending future sale. To some Hollywood mogul who feels that he should build a mansion in the mountains, his cabin in the woods. Well, they come here from Miami, they come here from LA, they bring a part of a city that'll never go away. Like a fear of strangers, accelerated time, the sound of car alarms in a town. Without crime, like quaint wooden fences, controlled security, setting up borders where they never used to be. But down in the graves, you can hear the miners sing, Big money ruins everything. Jackson Hole, too. <laughs> well, it happened in Aspen. And down in Santa Fe, it happens everywhere when the locals move away. Cause we can't afford to live here, we can't afford the rent. Unless we win the lottery or live in a tent. I think big money sucks. Please write that down. Please take a look what it did to this town. Trophy houses, trophy wives, trophy people leading trophy lives. Down in the graves, you can hear the miners sing. Big money ruins everything. St. 
goodbye to all the artists and people who can ski. Say hello to private nightclubs and elective surgery. No. Elective surgery? Elective. But they you don't really have to. to do that. Well, I think I'll build a billboard at the entrance of this town. If you came to prove how rich you are, then please turn around. Please turn around. High tail and run. You probably already ruined where you're coming from. So I went to the hardware store. It has been replaced with a boutique for trophy wives with a reconstructed face. It only sells handbags, sorry about that Stuff you'll never need Like fine Italian shoes And tasteful jewelry And we blame it on the landlords We blame it all on greed We blame it on the excess of the nouveau reach Down in the graves You can hear the miners say Big money ruins everything How did this happen? Her. Women driving Hummers, men wearing fur. No, not doing furs. Say goodbye to all the rock bands, by the purple haze. Say hello to vapid house music and strung out DJs. <laughs> I just made that up. I've never heard that one before. You know, I just made it up. Oh, good. Out front there, yeah. Oh, good. Vapid house music. Anyway, you know what? This song goes on. <laughs> But I think you know what I'm saying. Beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful. You know, it makes me happy. It's just, it's uh, creative. It's Thank actually you. fun. Thank you. And it's, uh, you know, accurate. I wonder if that <laughs> security guard knows. Yeah, yeah. That he inspired a song. He had a badge, Inspirational guy. And he had a walkie-talkie. Oh, my gosh. When you're in the, yeah. out in the Mother Nature and someone has a walkie-talkie. Direct line to the APD. 911, there's a runner approaching our property. Yep. This guy's clearly a threat. He's a threat and he's like. sweating heavily. <laughs> <laughs> and he's bumming me out because I wish I was exercising. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and all that. But you know, on a on a on a lighter note too, I think that big money obviously has created a lot of opportunities. Right. And tax base and services we enjoy and free well, the, buses and to be honest, you know, amenities. I wouldn't be working here if it wasn't for, you know, Big right. money and the generation, the generosity of these people, and yeah. you know the people who come here. It's it's great. If I lived yeah. in Junction, I'd be uh, delivering pizzas just like <laughs> I used to. I think one of the things that I've seen uh, increase the last couple of years as well is safety issues around Absolutely. town. Absolutely, that is true. We've seen a pickup in traffic and different kinds of behavior with the traffic, and you know I, I like to talk about the challenges, but also the solutions. Right. And you and I, as neighbors, will meet up by the newspaper and right. cite some of these things and actually see some of the problematic, right. like speeding coming oh, down yeah. from Smuggler Mountain. Yeah. Um, you know, people running through stop signs, which well, is clearly sign a safety thing is, issue. It's not an optional thing, it right. goes for everybody. It doesn't say yield on that thing. It say, it think says, about <laughs> stopping, go ahead and stop. Yeah, yeah. And I, I hardly ever say that. Well, but, I mean, there was a police officer, I think it was Roderick. Rod- yeah, Roderick's the man. Just pulling people over. I'm like, thank yeah. you for doing that. You We're know, just crossing part- the street with a five-year-old is, is terrifying. Well, that's, that's really what we need to kind of uh, educate people. Is, right. you know, there's a lot of kids and families living, especially on the Upper East Side, I call oh, it. Upper East Side. Uh, up by right? Smuggler. <laughs> and really, we don't want to see any more people get hurt. You know, we've had people Ooh. getting injured and killed the last few years you know, by um, drivers, know. you know, motorists. Yep. And so it's a real thing. And right. I think things like having the police present, yeah, it's nice. you know, is part of the solution. Thank you, APD. I want to see license plate technology grabbing, though, where we have the photography or the cameras to capture these license plates because right. whether there's an – officers can't be there all the time, right? right? There's usually only two or three squad cars out right. at any given time trying right. to kind of – kind of yeah. you know herd the cats around town that's an interesting but if thought. we have technology assisting that can hold people accountable right like they have in california and they're grabbing those license plates of speeding drivers yeah. and things like that that could also be part of it well, as well as start, traffic calming measures like speed slow bumps up, slow down there's yeah. no hurry that's the beautiful part of aspen you could walk most places and if you just chill out or maybe i'm just throwing it out there if you're going across town Maybe take that two minutes and put your phone down. 
Right. Am I out of line to say that? No texting while driving. It's bad. Well, you had an experience it's the other day. Selfish. You shared with me before the show. Yeah, where... I almost had a head-on collision with someone, and yeah. she was texting, and it was terrifying. But right. our cars came like this. You can talk to me on the street about that. It was it was scary. But yeah. yeah, yeah, and I've had a number of close calls as well, both in my vehicle, on my bike, which right. is most scary because then you're <sighs> exposed. I know. So if people run that stop sign, cut you off, right. then, you know, maybe even other conduct like right. flipping you off it's really becomes like how can i um take this kind of frustration and right. anger sometimes right. but but channel it right in a positive direction yeah you really have to be careful if you're on your bike yeah um and my kids are growing up now but i wouldn't want my kiddos riding bikes around town you know it's it's really dangerous you need to be careful out there so be careful yeah. bikers like yeah. me and eric and we do this because, you know, we love Aspen. And, you know, I've been, I'm coming up on 40 years. Yeah. You've been here over 30, right? 34. Yeah. So it comes Thank down God. to, we do this because we love Aspen. Right. We, we and do also, the local show because we love Aspen and we like to feature the people that inspire. Right. I'll throw out some credit to APSHA. Love you guys. If it wasn't for you, yeah. I know it's not a perfect system and people yeah. are going to complain no matter what you do. There's a lot of complaining going on about APSHA. Yeah. I wouldn't be here. My kids wouldn't have been raised here. Yeah. Everyone I know, um, that yeah, everyone I know who works here and stays here is because of APSHA. So thank you. Yeah. I know you catch all. It's from me. Um, That's it's, great. Thank you. Great gratitude. Yeah. And I've, I've heard that I don't know one person that lives in employee housing that doesn't work here full time. Right. I'm sure it's, it happens, but right. so thank you. Well, Dan, we got time okay. for one more one song. Quickie. And I'll I abbreviate it if it. I have to. Um, like I did uh, Big Money, I sped it up. <laughs> so anyway, this is about my love of this town. Yeah. It's called Small Town Love. Yeah, buddy. Love it. It's hard enough to act your age when every day's a blank page. Every day is different than before. And I might have missed my big break We were swimming in the lake Living life, that's what it's for But I feel complete A small town is enough for me I've seen it from the hill Up above that smuggler Down there in the glow Well, everything is nice and slow I'll never leave my small town love Small town love And I get up and I fall more often than a basketball Even here seems to make it worse And I like to say thanks a lot, you're all I need And what I've got, I love you so much, it hurts but I feel complete, a small town is enough for me I've seen it from the hill up above Down there in the glow, well everything is nice and slow I'll never leave my small town having me wow, brother dude. i'll see you at the newspaper stand thank you all for listening and supporting grassroots tv oh man so good so so um uh, it's just yeah it's a pleasure it's thank just you. a pleasure it's so fun to have you on the show Thanks. and kind of state of the town uh <laughs> what we're grateful for you know some of the challenges but also hopefully a couple solutions some and safety stuff yeah and especially when it comes to safety you know it's it's really we say as guides, of course, half jokingly, safety third. You know, usually stoke and fun are in first and second. But seriously, if you don't have the safety, you don't have much. In all, in all you seriousness, you don't teeth left. If you're frightened to walk around town or ride your bike, yeah. you know that's the opposite. We want to encourage right. people to bike, yeah. to walk, to do something healthy yeah. for ourselves and the environment. And I went out on a limb. So turn the phone off. You'll be there in a second. And I would highly encourage people to, drivers. if they see things like that, to yeah. report it. Okay. Because, and grab a license plate, you know, because when I do call the APD, 
and the Pekin County Sheriff, the, one of the first questions is, did you get their license plate? Mm -hmm. So, again, holding people accountable, trying to drive that change that yeah. we need to see. Right. But we can't do it by being apathetic. Right. You know, and so I think just reporting those things to the right. proper authorities, let take it out of your own hands right. at the same time. Let don't, them deal. Don't do a Will Smith. Yeah, exactly, exactly. There will be no Will Smithing on this show. <laughs> <laughs> you, know? you never know. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty quick reflexes there, you know. You so. could tell he'd thrown that slap more than once. Yeah, I actually didn't see it, but oh, I've heard so much about that it. Up. Yeah, I apologize. That's, that's okay. That's Just okay. being silly. But you know what? We're going to finish on a high note with the cookies. Damn. You guys ever tried these cookies? You survived the grueling test of conversation and music. I bake Eric's organic chocolate chip cookies for both my local show guests and Sundog Athletic guests. Mm -hmm. So just a small token of my thank appreciation. You. How many cookies are in here? Well, you're going to have to find out. That's we got a lot of We got to wrap. So thank you, Dan. Right. Thank you guys for watching this week on The Local Show. And thankful for organic cookies, too. <laughs> The Gonzo Foundation is a nonprofit organization created to promote literature, journalism, and political activism through the legacy of Hunter S. Thompson and is a proud supporter of the local show and Grassroots TV. For more information, visit thegonzofoundation.org. I'm so passionate about this community. I absolutely love living here and raising my family here. It gives me a lot of pride to share this with my friends and my clients and help them achieve their, their dreams of owning an Aspen Snowmass and enjoying this incredible lifestyle. Sundog Athletics Aspen's Adventure Sports School is your opportunity to experience private, all-inclusive snowshoeing, cross-country skiing, and fat biking instructional adventures that will improve your safety, performance, and enjoyment. Welcome to...